since we're getting so many new weapons in the new update, I figured this was a good time to do a tutorial in my weapon selector logic. And I'm going to show that off with the Battle Barge Mark III here, because it has a system of logic where each turret is controlled individually. It's all using the same buttons, the D-pad and X to, to uh, operate them, and it's R1 and L1 to switch between weapons. I don't know if you can see it, but there's a little select selector light on the top there to show which weapon's currently active without having to wiggle it around. But yeah, let's get into it. So I've gone ahead and done the basic setup. We've got four turrets that we're going to have. And all of their control or their inputs have been removed. So no controls on the rotating servos or any of the weapons. And of course they're set up to be a turret, so slower speed, infinite angle on the bottom, 45 on the top, hold position, all that good stuff. Unless you're very new to trail makers, you know how to set up a turret. But what we're going to focus on is the logic. So the main piece of the weapon selector logic is an accumulator. So we'll slap that down first. Then because we have four turrets that we're going to be controlling, we need four comparison gates. Next, we're going to need some ore gates. Five of them to be specific. And finally, we're going to fill in the rest of this rectangular area with AND gates. So, quite a few of them. Now don't get discouraged, this isn't as complicated as it looks. It's basically just a big grid. And before we even do any settings, I'm going to color code this to help it make a little bit more sense. So we've got a blue row. A red row, a yellow row, and a green row. So what we've got going on here, actually I'll explain it as we uh, do the settings. So first off we'll select our accumulator. And this is what actually will let us uh, switch between each weapon. So we're going to have our green input is R1, L1 is our red input. And we're going to have a minimum of zero. A maximum of three. And that's because we've got four turrets, but we're going to be counting a zero as one of the settings. So 0, 1, 2, 3, and you'll see that in just a second when we, uh, oh I almost forgot, we have to have it on use steps, that's very important. And then next we're going to select all of our comparison gates here, turn them to equals mode, and then we'll go through one at a time. and change the thresholds. So the first one is going to be a threshold of zero, so that it's automatically selected when we spawn in, and we're going to connect that to all the other gates that we colored blue, all of these AND gates down here. And actually, I almost forgot, our accumulator needs to be hooked up to all these comparison gates. That's rather important. Sorry to forget that. Anyways, back to the comparison gates. So we just hooked up all of this. And then we're going to do something similar here. We're going to leave the threshold at 1. And link it to all of the rest of the AND gates in that column. Then a threshold of 2 for the yellow. 
connected to all the yellow gates. And finally a threshold of three. And connected to all the red gates, or the green gates. I'm colorblind, sorry. And next we'll do the controls. That's what our OR gates on the left are for. So we'll start with X for our firing button. And then we connect that all the way across the row. So across each of these AND gates here. Then we'll do right. And attach it to all of those. The next one we'll do left. and attach it across the, the row. Next is up. And finally down. And now we're ready to start hooking this in. So we'll select our uh, top leftmost AND gate here in the blue row, the one that's connected to our firing button, and we'll connect that to the smart cannon, then the one below it is right, so we connect that directly to the rotating servo, the next one is left, so we have to change the output to negative one, and hook it up to the same servo, then up, we do on the upwards servo, and down, we set the output to negative one, and attach it to the vertical servo. And then we do the same thing for each of the other turrets. So the red one, connected to the laser, then right, for left we have to do the output of negative one, then up, and down, again with the output negative one. Then the cannon. Don't forget to make that negative one. I almost forgot there. And the rocket. Almost done. And the last thing we'll do is grab some uh, some tail lights here, so we can have our little indicators. Put four of them down. Turn them off by default and remove their toggle and then just hook one comparison gate up to each of them. And I believe that should be everything. So yeah, we start off with control of just the blue turret. And if we press R1, now we've got the laser. Press R1 again, we've got the cannon. And again, we've got the rocket. Then L1 cycles back the other direction. And there you go. That's the, uh, the logic switching system for having multiple weapons. Though I do have a slightly simpler way of doing it if you have just two, to or two turrets or two weapons that you want to toggle between. And I'll show you that right now. Okay, so with this one here, We've just got the two turrets, and instead of an accumulator and comparison gates, we have a NOR gate and an OR gate. And it's set up more or less the same. Everything else down here, the, uh, we've got the controls on the left, and then the AND gates and columns, color-coded to the turrets. 
and we simply have the NOR gate hooked up to the first column. And then the OR gate, we have whatever button we want as our switching button on a toggle, and we connect it to the NOR gate and everything in its column. So now, it just toggles between the two of them with the same button. And finally, I'll show you something that I only recently figured out. Is that if you want, you can have it so that your turrets will assume the position that the, or like the angle that the last one was set to when you switch it. So when I'm toggling between these, you can see it's automatically switching to the same direction that the last one was pointing. And it resets the one that's off. And this is only slightly different than before. So we've, it's the same, all this on this side, the red and yellow is the same. It's just our control logic that's a little bit different. So for our firing button, we still have an OR gate, but then we've got comparison logic for each of the other controls and accumulators for the inputs. So I'll start with the accumulators. We've got right in the green, left in the red, a minimum of 0, a maximum of 1, a scale of 20, and we're not using steps. And that's hooked into not just the comparison gates, but all the way across the row into the AND gates here. Then the comparison gates are, um, they're set to, the first one is set to greater than, with an output of negative 10, and that's hooked in across here. And the other one is less than, and it also has an output of negative 10, or negative 0.10, and is hooked up to the AND gates. And so what this is, what this is doing, is when the accumulator is in the positive direction, it tells it only to go to the right. And when it's in the negative, when the accumulator is in the negative, it tells it only to go to the left. And then it's the same thing down here for up and down. We got the minimum of zero, or blah, 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 the minimum of negative one, maximum of one, scale of one, and we're not using steps. The comparison first comparison gate is greater than with an output of negative 0.1 attached to the AND gates. And again, negative 0.1 less than and attached to the AND gates. Also, yep, the uh, the NOR gate and the OR gate on top here both have outputs of 0.1. And, oh, there are, there's a couple more differences. The turrets themselves have to be set up slightly different. So the speed is 2. The angle is just under 360, so it can't actually go in a continuous circle. I'll show you why in a minute. And this one's set up the same way. And neither of them are on hold position because obviously then it wouldn't be able to reset itself automatically. But, oh, I was gonna show you. If we do set the angle all the way to infinity, it seems like it'll be working just as fine at first. But if you try to go in a full circle, when you finally reach that full circle, it just takes off uncontrollably. And that's because when the signal reaches 1, it just wants to rotate all the way around, and it'll do it at max speed. When the signal's below 1, it's just trying to find a certain position. So like I said, this is a little bit more complicated, and I only recently learned it myself. But 
if you want your turrets to have the fancy switch and hold their angle, it's worth it. And it doesn't really take any extra blocks either. It just takes two extra blocks for it. And there you go. So those are my different weapon control systems. In and out with all their logic. And I hope you guys liked it and uh, learned a little bit here. Thanks for watching. Like, comment, subscribe, all of that good stuff. If you got any questions, let me know and I'll try to help you out. And uh, yeah, thanks for watching. Bye-bye now. PlayStation.